Hi, everyone. Good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, this is Conservation Conversations. My name is Ed Pritchard, and I'm with Miami Eco Adventures. Uh, we're a division of Miami Dade Parks, and we're a co host of this webinar series along with UF IFA Extension and Florida Sea Grant. So it's great to see everyone here tonight, some of our returning folks and some new participants. So uh, thank you for joining. Um, we really enjoyed bringing this uh, series to you guys. We're running on uh, two years now and we've covered a wide range of topics. I'm really excited about tonight's. Uh, we're gonna be talking about opossums. Uh, just a few housekeeping things before we do get started. Um, as a reminder, this uh, webinar is being recorded. So. Uh, we will be uh, sending out a link to that recording um, in, a, in the next couple of days, so that way you guys can share that with anyone that you'd like. Uh, also, uh, you, everyone's currently muted, so we ask you guys to type any questions that you might have regarding the talk, uh, anything you might want to ask our speaker, if you can type that into the chat. Uh, myself and uh, my colleague Anna will moderate this chat while, um, while our speaker is presenting, and then we'll have that time at the end to, to pose those questions. Um, again, if you enjoy these webinars, you really want to um, get those updates from us when we uh, have our, our next uh, season's lineup, uh, you can, uh, Anna's going to put her email in the chat and you can send, uh, or you can put, uh, you can be added to our mailing list. Um, you can also follow us on social media. We post our, our webinars um, and the upcoming topics on there. It's at Miami Eco Adventures and at Miami Dade Sea Grant. Uh, also, one more reminder, uh, following tonight's talk, we're going to have another, another exciting round of trivia. We do this at the end of every season. Um, so we have some questions uh, based on our, our talks from this, from this uh, spring season. So with that said, uh, I'm very excited to introduce tonight's speaker, uh, Michelle Lawrence Muniz. She's an interpretive program leader with Miami Eco Adventures at Arch Creek Park. Um, and she is going to talk to us about opossums. Take it away, Michelle. Thank you, Ed. Good evening, everyone. Like Ed said, my name is Michelle Lawrence Muniz, and I'm an interpretive program leader with Miami Eco Adventures. For today's presentation, I would like to spotlight the Virginia possum. By the end of my presentation, I hope to have you convinced that possums are indeed awesome. Perfect. All right. But first, you can see you may know, or think you may know about the Virginia possum. So number one, true or false? Adult possums. Hold on, let me see this. Hang from their tails to sleep. Choose A for true, B for false. Number two, true or false? Rabies is the leading cause for fatality in possums. A true, B false. Number three, what is one way that climate change may be impacting the Virginia possum? A, their population is declining. B, their range is becoming more limited. C, their range is becoming more expansive. Or D, they have not been impacted by climate change. Once you answered all the questions, please um, scroll down and hit submit. Good. Give you a couple more seconds to get that in. All right, great. I think we'll go ahead and end that. Perfect. Okay. So is it possum or opossum? They're actually in different families. So possum without the O in front of the P are part of the Phalangeridae family with about 70 species that are native to Australia, New Zealand, and China. On the left, you can see an example of the common brush tail possum. You can see that it has a furry tail and a rounded face, which is common for these species of possum. Opossums belong to the Didelphidae family with over 100 species and are found in North, Central, and South America. On the right, you see the Virginia opossum, which has a bare or naked tail and a pointed face. Besides having similar names, both are also semi-arboreal marsupials. Before I move on, I do wanna point out that in North America, 
there are two ways to pronounce opossum. You can either pronounce the first O and say opossum, or the O can be silenced and be pronounced possum. So for the sake of the rest of the presentation, I will be focusing solely on the Virginia possum, Didelphus virginiana, and using the pronunciation with the silenced O. Like I mentioned, Pops are in America, and that is because of the Great American Biotic Interchange. If you are not familiar with the Great American Biotic Interchange, this was an important event where the formation of the Isthmus of Panama, a land bridge, facilitated the migration and exchange of fauna from North America via Central America to South America, and vice versa about 3 million years ago. Included in this migration were the Didelphids, or the possum family. Among um, these migrants, possums were the most, one of the most successful migrants moving northwards as far as Canada. So today, the Virginia possum is only naturally found in the continent of North America. So you can see here, the range goes from the southern part of Canada to Costa Rica. Throughout this range, possums naturally inhabit a variety of habitats like swamps, forests, and woodlands. But as we encroach on their natural habitat, they have adapted to inhabiting developed areas like cities and suburbs as well. In these particular habitats, you can find possums often up in trees, straddling fences, or slowly ambling about the ground searching for food. During the day, you may find them denning in tree cavities, hollow logs, burrows, and under decks and buildings. Here in Miami-Dade County, you may find evidence of them living in our parks and backyards, but you're most likely to encounter them at night while taking out the trash, walking your dog, or along the road while driving. So you may not be convinced just yet, but one of the many reasons that make the Virginia possum awesome is its range. They are the only marsupial found in the continental United States and north of Mexico. The term marsupial is derived from the Latin word marsupium, which means pouch. So the Virginia possum is our only mammal that gives birth to an underdeveloped baby that then continues to develop inside of its mother's pouch. I'll talk a little bit more about possum's offspring, but I do wanna hit on their unique reproductive tract. So not only do female possums have pouches, but they also have two uteri and two vaginal canals. The male thus has a bifurcated penis like a two-pronged fork. This discovery led to interesting folklore. It was once believed that male possums would reproduce with the female through her nose and that she would birth her joeys into her pouch by sneezing. This misconception probably came about because of how tiny the joeys are when they are born and how much time the mother would spend licking her pouch pre and post birth. A female can birth about 80 babies, each small and a baby, but they won't all make it to the pouch or successfully latch. Although the mother has 13 nipples, which would help increase the odds of survival, the surviving litter size can average from four to nine joeys. The joeys will stay in the pouch for about two and a half months, and once they outgrow the pouch, they may be seen hanging out with mom on her back but after about four and a half months, they are on their own. Here, you can see a photo of a joey using its prehensile tail to hang from a branch, which they can do for a short period of time while they're young. Here, you can see an adult using its prehensile tail to maneuver itself around a branch, but adults do not completely hang by their tail for long periods of time because they cannot sustain their full body weight. It is a common misconception that they hang from their tails to go to sleep, and this idea is often spread through how possums are portrayed in cartoons, but they really spend their days sleeping in dens. These dens are filled with dry leaves, grasses, and other insulating materials that they bring in by using their unique prehensile tail. Two other unique physical characteristics that possums have are an opposable hallux or big toe, on their real, rear limbs 
to assist them with their semi-arboreal lifestyle. And a total of 50 teeth, which makes them the land mammal with the most teeth in North America. All those teeth come in handy when you have an omnivorous diet, but they also come in handy to scare off predators. Some natural predators of the Virginia possum include owls, hawks, and the red fox. Possums try to intimidate potential predators by hissing and baring all their teeth to appear threatening. If that fails, sometimes as an involuntary response due to shock, a possum may play dead. It will fall over with its mouth open, lie motionless, and sometimes even defecate and secrete a foul smelling green substance from its anal glands. Whether this occurs beforehand, so a predator would ignore the dead possum or in a predator's mouth to discourage eating, the ability to avoid death by imitating death is pretty awesome. There is, however, some threats where playing dead won't be the best means of defense. Possums eat just about anything they can find. That includes roadkill. Oftentimes, possums follow their nose to feast on roadkill at night and then in return can become roadkill themselves if they freeze in car headlights or can't get off the road fast enough. When driving at night, make sure to be aware of your surroundings, scanning the road, and keeping an eye out for eye shine to avoid hitting possums and other wildlife. <laughs> possums, just like any other wildlife species, can carry disease. Some of the diseases that threaten possums include salmonella and toxoplasmosis, which can be transmitted through contact with their urine or feces and can affect people and domestic animals. Keeping this in mind, if you do come across an injured or orphaned possum, the best thing for you to do would be to contact your local wildlife rescue or rehabilitation center. Here are two local resources for South Florida. Pelican Harbor Seabird Station, which actually has 24 hour drop off cages on the side of their building and South Florida Wildlife Center. You can keep that up for a little bit so you guys can jot that information down or take any screenshots. All right. All right. Although the Virginia possum has a short lifespan of about two years in the wild and face a lot of threats, their population size has a positive trend for mature individuals. The species is listed as least concern. And I think it's different to hear about a native species that is not currently declining, but actually increasing. The population may be able to increase due to its adaptability to climate change and easy accessibility to food and urban setting. We often hear about how climate change is causing a negative impact on population size of animals, but that may not be the case for the Virginia possum. We learned about how early ancestral possums migrated from the tropical climate of South America into Central and North America. But research shows that the Virginia possum today are continuing that migration north where it is colder and drier. As temperatures rise, possums can travel north, adapt and tolerate winters in their dens. However, climate change may not be the only factor assisting possums to expand their range. Virginia possums are opportunistic omnivores that do not hibernate. So when cold winters approach, they have to continue foraging for food to survive. Spending time foraging in the snow in these colder climates is risky for the possum because food availability is scarce and they may suffer from frostbite and ultimately starvation. In these photos, you can see how their naked limbs and tail are susceptible to frostbite. However, Possums have adapted to reside near residential areas where the food availability can provide them with an advantage to find food quicker. Preventing conflict. As possums adapt to searching for food near residential areas, this may lead them to vegetable gardens or garbage cans. 
this accessibility to food may also lead them to searching for potential denning locations like attics or under homes. In order to prevent this, the best thing to do to avoid any conflicts is to, is to modify your home so it is not attractive to possums. Here are some recommendations to help deter possums from your living space. <laughs> Don't feed them. Feeding possums and other wildlife alike can create situations where they lose fear of, animal, of humans and may become aggressive when they are not being fed as expected. This can also attract multiple possums and this high concentration can then spread diseases and parasites among their population and your pets. So this includes preventing access to pet food. By keeping food bowls inside, or if your pets are fed outside, preventing access to pet food by keeping food bowls um, clean and cleaning up after any leftovers or spillage well before it becomes dark every day. Prevent access to pet doors. Keep any indoor pet food away from doors and lock pet doors at night. Prevent access to garbage cans. Ensuring your garbage can is on leveled ground to prevent tipping over and has a lid, preferably secured with a clamp, bungee cord, or a weight on top, are ways to keep possums out of your garbage cans. Double bagging your garbage can also help minimize temptation by minimizing strong aromas that may attract possums to investigate. Prevent access to potential denning sites. You can do this by covering or fixing any potential entries or weak spots around the home. Keeping trees trimmed can also prevent them from climbing onto roofs. Learning to coexist and prevent conflict with wildlife like the Virginia possum as they adapt to human impacts is important. Once we learn to coexist with wildlife, we can begin to understand and appreciate the ecosystem services they may provide. When possums are not rummaging through trash, they are providing ecosystem services through their diet by eating rotting fruit, carrion, and pests like mice, insects, and ticks. This has led them to be known as nature's little sanitation engineer. Their diet helps disperse seeds and reduces the risk of diseases that can spread from carrion and ticks, one of these diseases being Lyme disease. Here you can see a parcel of possums keeping our environment clean by feeding on a deer carcass. Do possums really have the power of immunity? Possums are not immune to all snake venom, but they have developed a serum protein in their blood that neutralizes some snake venom like that of the pit viper, like copperheads, diamondbacks, and cottonmouths. Studies suggest that this adaptation developed as possums preyed on venomous snakes, creating a race between snakes developing more complex toxins and possums evolving greater resistance to the toxins. Scientists hope that this research could lead to an inexpensive and effective anti-venom for human snake bite victims. What about when it comes to rabies? Possums are not necessarily immune to rabies. However, the odds of encountering one with rabies is extremely rare. This is because they have a low body temperature of 94 to 97 degrees Fahrenheit, and the rabies virus does not survive. Some may say that possums are just too cool for rabies. The adaptability to evade rabies and consume venomous snakes is an awesome feat for the Virginia possum. However, there is more awesomeness to explore. There was a study published in Scientific American where scientists wanted to test the sex ratio hypothesis, which assumes that reproductive success varies more for males than for females and polygenous mammals. Assuming strong males will have many mates, but weak males may have none, whereas nearly all females will be able to mate. Hence, looking at the line graph, 
if the amount of parental investment affects the future reproductive fitness of offspring, then mothers capable of high investment should produce more male off offspring than female. And mothers capable of low investment should produce more females than males. They conducted their study by providing food outside the dens of radio collared females and also radio collared a control group where they did not provide any food. Looking at the bar graphs where the pink represents the food supplemented group and gray represents the control group, the results showed that the food supplemented females produce more males and larger young, while the control group produce a balanced sex ratio. These results show that the females being fed were indeed investing more into their young. When testing for benefits of this higher investment, the recapture rates for the juvenile males were higher from the food supplemented group compared to the offspring from the control group, indicating that they indeed benefited from the higher investment. This high reproductive efficiency of the Virginia possum under changing ecological conditions could explain their great adaptability over millions of years. Although didelphids evolved during the Miocene about 23 million years ago, and the Virginia possum diverged about 75,000 years ago, the Virginia possum looks very similar to its ancient marsupial ancestors and is therefore frequently thought of as a living fossil. Looking to the future. Looking to the future, possums may reveal the mechanisms by which ecological forces can influence or determine sex ratios and offspring of different species. So why are possums awesome? The Virginia possums or Virginia possums are living fossils, sea dispersers, North America's only marsupial, full of unique physical characteristics, helping reduce the spread of disease through their diet, resistant to some snake venom and rabies, and potential answers to many scientific questions. So the next time someone shows contempt for the awesome Virginia possum, I hope you'll be able to share some of the information you learned here tonight and can teach them to not hate, but appreciate nature's little sanitation engineer. So I'd like to revisit the poll to see what you now know about the Virginia possum. Number one, true or false, adult possums hang from their tail to sleep. A for true, B for false. Number two, true or false, rabies is the leading cause for fatality in possums. A for true, B for false. Number three, what is one way that climate change may be impacting the Virginia possum? A, their population is declining. B, their range is becoming more limited. C, their range is becoming more expansive. Or D, they have not been impacted by climate change. And number four, do you intend to apply or share the information that you learned today? A for yes, B for no. And give you a couple more seconds. Make sure that you scroll down when you're done answering the questions and click submit. All right. Perfect. Looks like everyone submitted their answers. So we can go over the answers now. So for number one, the answer is false. Um, adult possums do not hang from their tail to sleep. They actually spend their day sleeping in dens and can utilize their prehensile tail to maneuver around trees, but once they, they are adults, they cannot sustain their body weight. Number two, 
the answer is false. Rabies is extremely rare in possums due to their low body temperature. And number three, what is one way that climate change may be impacting the Virginia possum? The answer is C, as temperatures rise due to climate change, possums are able to expand their range more north. Perfect. So I'd like to open the floor for any questions, if any. All right, great job there, Michelle. That was uh, quite the, the lecture. I really appreciate you. Uh, informing us about opossums and just kind of changing the narrative there. Um, so we'll take uh, questions at this time. So any um, questions that you had for our speaker, um, we'll go ahead and take those now. Um, Anna also just put the email, her uh, email address in the chat. So if you think of anything uh, after tonight, you can always uh, send an email. So I have our first question from Anthony. Hi, Anthony. Uh, he asks, are there any opossums found in uh, places like Dry Tortugas National Park, uh, South Padre Island National Seashore, or even a place like the Everglades? Um, he also has visited places like the Grand Canyon. So Michelle, can you tell us a little bit more about the, maybe the range and where we might find these both across our South Florida parks and maybe elsewhere? So yeah, so their range is wide, if um, you remembered from earlier in the presentation, they have been able to migrate throughout um, from, like I said, from South America all the way up to Canada. And they are found in these different parts where the climate is nice and warm, where it's forested, provided, providing the, these wooded areas and that nice access to water, whether it's swamp or streams they definitely have been able to adapt to live in these spaces as well. Great, thanks. Uh, let's see. Um, Anna, do we have any, any other questions? Let's see. Oh, I have one from Marsha. So uh, she's always heard that opossum spread rabies. So. She appreciates, uh, appreciates that clarification on their low body temperature. Yeah, I think that's really interesting. I think a lot of people maybe just, you know, assume, you know, they think about raccoons, possums and that same thread. So I think, you know, that's definitely helpful information. Yeah, I think it's also maybe along with the misconception that possums are dirty rats when they are not actually rats at all. So um, different animals in the rodentia order so rodents like squirrels can carry rabies, whereas, like I said, possums do not commonly. It is extremely rare to find a possum with rabies. All right. Well, um, we oh, have one. Sorry, we just we have one that just came in. Great. Yeah, go ahead. And the question is. How does a bear react if they saw an opossum? How does a what, I'm sorry, react? A bear. A bear? Mm-hmm. I'm not sure how a bear may particularly react. Um, I feel like the, the possum would definitely want to opt for playing dead at that, <laughs> at that point. But it's not a common... Oh yeah, they actually, bears do consume possum. So yeah, so it'll try to eat it. Gotcha, thank you. Yeah, so the question about grizzly bears in the Rocky Mountains. That definitely seems like it's part of the circle of life, but maybe a, a battle of wits between the possum and the bear. Yeah, if it looks dead enough and unappealing, then the possum will win that one. <laughs> I have a, a good question here from uh, Nina. Nina. Nina would like to know any tips for if we come across seemingly orphaned baby opossums, uh, possibly less than you know four and a half months. Yeah, so I can pull up the slide again with the resources that are local here for South Florida. But again, it, the best thing for you to do 
would be to contact your local wildlife rescue or rehabilitation center and to see if they would be able to come pick it up or if they would instruct you on how would be the best method for you to get it to them. Okay, great. Um, Richard would like to know, are there differences between opossums living in the Western US and the Eastern US? And do the ranges not overlap? Or so are we, yeah, we're talking about the two different populations. Is there any differences between them? So the difference between those populations are more, more likely that the ones on the West were introduced by humans because the natural path has been more along the Eastern US. So any of the ones that like the populations on the West have probably not migrated them there themselves, but have been brought over by humans and been able to thrive there. Okay, yeah, and I, I think maybe their, their diet might be, you know, just a little yeah. bit different, just based on, you know, again, from being, you know, very much adapted. Yeah. Yeah, they would have to adapt to whatever food is in the area, but the populations wouldn't necessarily overlap because they didn't migrate, but they would be the same species. Okay, so I have a follow-up actually from Nina regarding the, um, the orphans. Um, so uh, she's heard that, uh, that the mom won't come back for the babies that have fallen off of her back. Uh, is that true? And um, if we find a lone baby, can we assume that we need to step in to help rather than wait for the mom to come back? Um, I would give it time, but it is, it can happen accidentally. So the mom may not have noticed that the baby fell off her. So she may not return for it. So I would give it a couple, like, try to give it some time, inspect the area to see if the mother is around. But again, I would forward that question to a local wildlife rescue so they can you know, better assist with that. Agreed, yes. So yeah, I think uh, we, do, we do have some great resources here. Mm -hmm. um, Pelican Harbor has, and they're actually opening a new facility here soon. So they'll have the capacity, but they do a great job at you know, rescuing and rehabbing and taking care of those orphans. So mm -hmm. thanks for those answers. So I think we're, that's um, it for our questions. So thank you, Michelle, for um, that great presentation. And thank you all for, for joining us tonight for our final conservation conversation of the spring. We are going to have a trivia session. So we've put together uh, a trivia. So if you have to leave now, it is, you know, a little after 630, but we'd love to have you join us. Um, so I'm going to have Anna go ahead and talk to you a little bit more about how we are going to run this trivia session.